B and H are roughly, you know, within the ballpark. They're not like huge orders of magnitude, larger or smaller than each other. Okay, that, that's Euler's equations use that. There's other uh, variations of these um, that are Timoshenko equations that take into account, I mean, they're similar to these, but they have other terms added onto them. And they take into account short beams that are they're relatively short compared to their B and their H. Um, and, and they can even handle uh, extreme ratios between H and B, okay? Or at least they do much better, okay? They're still, for linear scenarios, they're still for infinitesimally small forces and, and infinitesimally small displacements. Um, and they just capture the original you know, instantaneous stiffness and, and, and behavior. But um, they're, they're much more accurate than these simplified Euler equations for um, longer beams, okay? So, again, to recap, these are only true for uh, beams that are like about 10 times longer than their B or H. Um, if, if you want to do a rectangular prism that's much shorter, like a nub flexure or a living hinge, um, you know, you, you definitely want to use Timoshenko, um, you know, with small l. Uh, you, you'd want to use Timoshenko, and, and even then, if you get it too short, uh, in my experience, it doesn't model it that, that great, okay? But, but uh, for, you know, Timoshenko is the better way to use, and it, it works for long beams as well. Okay, so and you can look up those equations. All right, um, all right, so now let's look at um, how to construct... Um, you know, that, that's how to construct a stiffness matrix for just a single rectangular prism beam that's fairly long, right, um, of, any, of any geometry, L, H, and B. Um, but let's see how to construct a stiffness matrix for an entire parallel system, okay, of flexures for any general parallel system, okay? You'll recall that there are three kinds of flexure systems, okay? There are parallel, serial, and hybrid, okay? And, um, you know, parallel systems consist of two rigid bodies joined directly to each other, okay, by flexible elements. And then serial ones are parallel modules or systems stacked or nested in series. And hybrid is, in, is some combination of those two, or it's really any other configuration that's not parallel or serial, okay? So, um, you know, the first half of this course will just focus on the design of parallel systems and teach all the fundamental principles. And, and then the last kind of half the course will teach you how to design these, okay? So we're going to just focus on these for this lecture um, until the end, and then I'll show you how to deal with these as far as stiffness matrices go. Okay, so let's look. This is a parallel system. Undeniably, it's got two rigid bodies, this rectangular thick prism up here and this rectangular thick prism here. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's there square extrusions. Um, these are the two rigid bodies. This one's the ground, by, as, as indicated by the hatch marks. And it's they're, they're both directly connected by uh, these elements, two wires and one blade, okay, labeled one, two, and three. Okay? So um, the question is, how do we build the stiffness matrix of this parallel system? And there is a stiffness matrix. There's a six by six stiffness matrix that um, fully characterizes the stiffness of this parallel system and in any, any other parallel system. Okay, how do, you, how do you build that, okay? Knowing how to build a stiffness matrix for an individual rectangular prism. Okay, well, um, okay, so that, that's what I'm gonna talk about here, but um, let me say, uh, let's just do a quick review from the last lecture about what twists, you know, displacement twists are. So displacement twists, um, you, you know, you can imagine that they're drawn as, as lines of action. In this case, we've drawn it green because um, that it's a screw um, of any pitch, okay? If, if the pitch was zero, it would be a red rotation. If the pitch was infinite, it would be a translation. Um, and, and so you could visualize, just by knowing the line of action, how this stage, you know, if this guy's grounded and this stage is allowed to move, and it, 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 it screwed around this uh, green axis, it would translate in that direction as it rotated around it. You could visualize that. If this was red, you could imagine it purely rotating. If this was black arrow, you could imagine it translating in that direction, okay? Um, twists, as you know, um, well, first of all, they're usually velocity. They're usually given in terms of velocity um, with, uh, you know, starting with omega x, omega y, omega z, uh, v x, v y, v z. But we're going to talk about displacement twists. If you recall from the last lecture, we're going to assume these are just uh, 
traditional velocity twist, but times by delta t, some infinitesimal increment of time, so that they're delta theta x, delta theta y, delta theta z, d, um, you know, delta dx, delta dy, delta dz. Okay, and those 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 values are the rotations and displacements of this point with respect to this axis, because this is the global coordinate system. So, if I define t displacement as d theta dx, you know, d, d theta d theta y, d theta z, and d delta dx dy dz, all these things, that would be the that would be as if this point were attached to that stage. So imagine like a big ugly extension of that stage coming and enveloping this point to help your brain visualize this point is stuck on that stage. And if I gave you this twist and it's six components, the first three components would tell you the three rotations of that stage, um, of this point on that stage with respect to these three components, X, Y, Z in that direction. And then the three translations of this point as if it was stuck on that stage. Um, with respect to the global coordinate system X, Y, and Z, okay? So just imagine the global coordinate system, wherever it is, um, is stuck on the stage you're talking about, and as the stage, you know, rotates or screws about this axis, um, you imagine this guy being rigidly fixed on that stage, screwing with it. And if I gave you the six components, it would be the three rotations and then the three translations um, infinitesimal, right, of, of this point with respect to this coordinate system if, if it were stuck on that, okay? So um, that's important to think about. Okay, all right, so first let's find the stiffness matrix of element one, okay? So let's just forget about elements two and three. We're just going to find a stiffness matrix for element one. Okay, well, what we do is we define a coordinate system where... Um, where it is at the location where this attaches, you know, its element attaches to the stage. And remember that location needs to be right in the center. The cross section of this is a square, okay? And you want to be right in the center of that square of that cross section. And you want your Z prime, your new coordinate system, going in, you know, from the element into the stage. So away, away from the inside of the element. And then you want to arrange X and Y. So that first of all, they follow the right hand rule. So you go, Take your right and go through x to y, and then your thumb is z. But but secondly, you want them to point normal uh, to, to these faces. Okay, so so there, you know a square extrusion, which is what this is, has four sides, and you want those those vectors pointing perpendicular to, to you know two of those sides. Okay, so that's like a the principal axis for, for this. Okay, um, and. Um, and whether, you know, x points in this direction, whether, you know, x could point in any out of any of the four sides, but whatever you pick, y better be, you know, follow the right hand rule. If you take your right hand and go through x, it better go right to y, and then your thumb tells you z, okay? All right, so that's how you pick your coordinate, your, your, you know, your coordinate system up there, your, your new prime coordinate system. And now what you do is you define, with respect to your global coordinate system, a three by one vector L that points from this point to that point where it attaches. Okay, that's L, and again, it's a three by one vector. There's an X component, there's a Y component, a Z component that's defined with respect to the global coordinate system pointing there. And then um, you also want to define unit vectors N1, N2, and N3 that are all orthogonal and all intersect, right? Well, Vectors don't have location, but you, you'd have them going collinear with the x prime, y prime, z prime, where n1 corresponds to the x prime, n2 corresponds to the y prime, n3 corresponds with z prime. And um, they are defined with respect to this coordinate system. So there'd be for n1, there'd be three components. There'd be you know n1x, n1y, and n1z. And, and they're defined with respect to these coordinate systems, but they're going to point along x prime. And the magnitude of n1 better be 1. Same thing with n2 and n3. Okay? Okay, so great. So you've defined L, n1, n2, and n3 with respect to this global coordinate system. And then what you're going to do is you're going to construct a, a transformation matrix n. Okay? For element 1. So you can see this parentheses 1, this is n for element 1. Okay? And, and, um, 
uh, you know, if, if you don't, if this doesn't look familiar, review lecture two because I tell you how to structure this transformation matrix. And what, what we're, the whole goal of why we're building this is because what we want to do is if I give you some twist, uh, displacement twist that's imposed on the stage, and of course, by giving it to you, you'll know the three rotations, the three translations of this point if it were attached to the stage. But what we want to know is what are the three rotations and three translations of the stage at this point in this coordinate system? Because if we knew that, then we could relate. You'll notice going back here, okay, we could relate it to this. You'll notice this, this is in the center. Z is pointing out. Y is pointing there. X is pointing there. In, in this case, H and B are the same, right, uh, since it's a wire. Okay, but you can see we have the stiffness matrix relating a rectangular prism with that coordinate system. Okay, so if we're looking at this general case, right, and we're just looking at this single beam here, we want to find the three rotations and the three displacements of that coordinate system caused by a rotation at that stage about this axis uh, T, displacement twist. So, but when I give this to you, it's, I will of course give it to you with respect to the global coordinate system, so we want to do a transformation matrix, construct all these things L, N1, N2, N3, populate this six by six matrix, and, and then we're going to use it to transform T um, by doing this. We will invert N, so N1 for element one raised to negative one times this T, okay, that's defined with respect to the global coordinate system, and out of that will come T prime, which will be tell you delta theta x prime, delta theta y prime, and so on and so forth, tell you the three rotations and three translations, you know, of that point with respect to this coordinate system um, caused by, you know, the displacement of this stage, if, if this point was now on that stage, which it certainly is, um, it will, uh, you know, it, you want to know how that moves as a consequence of that twist, okay? Okay, so now we have this twist defined with respect to the local coordinate system here. Um, and then you already have it in this form. So if you, if you go back to here, again, you now have that in this form. This is with respect to this coordinate system. So if you just take this matrix and you invert it, which is the stiffness matrix, so if you times this guy by the stiffness matrix, you'll get these, okay, which I'll show you here. Okay, here we are. Okay, so we took, we took all this and we times it by the stiffness matrix of this element. Okay, and that takes into account that this stiffness matrix takes into account the uh, material properties of that element, its geometry, its length, th uh, thickness, and width, um, and that's all taken into account in this guy. Okay, and so if you times all that, you will now get um, what the tau x, y, z, and what the force x, y, z is with respect to this local coordinate system. Those are the uh, tau x prime, tau y prime, tau z prime. Those are the torques caused by this guy to resist this motion at this point with respect to that. And same thing with the last three forces. It's with respect to this coordinate system. Okay. So now you might notice, well, this is starting to look like a wrench. Except the problem is, is remember, wrench vectors start with the first, you know, the force and end with the tau. So if we could just take that and switch those directions, then we'd get it a wrench form. So what we do is we create a new matrix here, okay, that is, uh, you know, a delta matrix where it is a six by six matrix. These are, you know, three by three zero matrix here, three by three zero matrix here and identity matrices, three by three identity matrices. An identity matrix is obviously uh, a matrix that's populated with entire zeros, but its diagonals are all ones, okay? So, um, and so you can see this, this would essentially, um, right, what, what, what this matrix would do, and I want you to remember this matrix, is if you times it by this matrix, see that, that's all this here, times by that matrix, what it will do is it will take these and flip them there, and it'll take these and flip them there, okay? And this is, is actually a wrench made vector, right? Remember, wrench vectors start with force as the first three, and, and end with tau as the last three, okay? So the entire purpose of this is just to do bookkeeping 
to help nature because nature is organized, twists and wrenches differently. Remember from last lecture, uh, the first three things in a twist are the angular component, um, and then it ends with the linear component, velocity. But then with a wrench, the first three components are the linear component, the last three components are the, are the um, angular component, the torque. Okay, so we're just we're just helping nature organize this by multiplying this. Okay. Okay, so this now is the wrench vector defined with respect to this local coordinate system that it results as, as a consequence of trying to take this stage and, and screw it about this uh, twist line of action. That's the resisting wrench vector that this element will impart on that stage with respect to this local coordinate system. Okay, so, uh, but now if we take that and multiply that by the same transformation matrix, okay, then what we do is we transform this wrench back into the global coordinate system. So we're, we start with, you know, we start with a, a twist with respect to the global coordinate system, and we want to end with a wrench with respect to the global coordinate system. So you take all this, times it by n, okay? And it's not inverted. This is not n inverse. And the reason you don't um, is, I mean, first of all, you can just see it from the math. If you take this, and multiply it by that, you can see the first row is going to be multiplied by fx prime. Okay, that's going to essentially be um, just a, a, full, a pure force wrench along that direction, right? There's no q in there. Okay, and then, if you, and then you add it to a pure force wrench, you know, fy prime times that is going to be basically a blue line uh, through y prime. And then this is, you know, same thing. Uh, times it by this, uh, and this will be a blue line through z, and then you, you multiply these, and you can see if you multiply tau x prime by 0 and 1, that will be a pure tau in the x direction, and, and consequently, you know, this one will be a tau in y prime, and then tau in z prime, okay? And so if you add, it, you're by multiplying this by this vector, you're essentially linearly combining all those wrenches defined with respect to the global coordinate system. And so it'll be a linear combination that is with respect to the global coordinate system, okay? So stare at that for a while, and hopefully you can understand the derivation of how you can take the twist with respect to the global coordinate system, multiply it by n inverse to put it in the local coordinate system, times by the stiffness matrix, correct for the locations of the linear and angular components, and then convert it back to global coordinate system. And now you have here, basically, a stiffness matrix of element 1, which is why we have these 1, 1, 1 here, okay? Well, and, and so, so basically the stiffness matrix of that is this stuff in here, because you've got basically F equals KX, where X is tau, force is W, and K is essentially this. So you have a K, you know, twist wrench stiffness matrix that relates twist to wrenches for element 1, okay? Now, um, now what you do is, well, what about element two? Well, you do the same thing. You draw a new L vector that points to where it attaches to the stage. You orient this so N3 again goes into the stage out of that. And you orient N1, N2 any way you want as long as they're perpendicular to their faces and they follow the right hand rule, okay? And uh, sure enough, uh, if you do that, you can do the exact same thing. You can make your new N2. You can use the same stiffness matrix because it's the same thing or make sure you find a stiffness matrix corresponding to this element, local stiffness matrix, and, and you do the same thing, and now you have the wrench as a result of this element being deformed by the stage rotating with a tau, or sorry, with a, with a twist, displacement twist vector, okay? And then you do the same thing for this, for element three. In this case, again, you point to the center of the rectangular cross-section, right in the center, Again, N3 has to go into the stage. That's important for our convention. You could change it, but then you'd have to change our convention of the rectangular prism. It's fine. As long as you're mathematically correct, you'll be correct. But if you want to use the convention I presented in this, where Z is coming out of the rectangular prism, then you better have N3 going out of it. And then, remember, N2 uh, should be pointing in the direction perpendicular to the B, the width of it. And then N1 uh, better follow the right-hand rule with N2. You do N1 through N2 points N3. Now, again, we could have done N2 pointing the opposite direction, and we just would have corrected for N1. It'll give you the same 
same answer. And I want you to think about that and, and convince yourself why it would give you the same answer. Okay, but once you define this L, N1, N2, and N3 with respect to this global coordinate system, you can make this. Okay, so great. So we've made a twist wrench stiffness uh, uh, matrix essentially for all three of our elements. And so, um, and by the way, note that S changes according to the geometry and material properties of the applicable element, and N changes according to location orientation of the applicable element, okay? Um, and, and delta always stays the same. So basically what that's saying is, um, you know, there's, there's two ways to describe um, a design, okay? There's topology and there's geometry, okay? Um, and then, of course, there's material properties of those things, right? So the, the, the topology is entirely the kind of element, okay? It, it's the location and orientation of that element, okay? So in N, these N vectors, they contain everything you need to know about the location and orientation of these elements. So N is a bit, essentially the topology vector, you know, matrix. Um, and it, telling you the location, L, and orientation, N1, N2, N3, uh, of, of the element, okay? S tells you what it's made of, what material it's made of, and its geometry, meaning what is H, what is B, and what is L, okay? That's what, so this is kind of material and geometry, and these are topology, location and orientation. Okay, and for these, we're assuming the kind is rectangular prism. Okay, so um, so that's just an insight to note. But notice they're all being taken into account in the stiffness. You need to know the location, orientation, and geometry and material properties to calculate the stiffness matrix. Okay, um, but just you know isolate those. Okay, so now how do you find the grand stiffness matrix of the entire mechanism? Well, you you just simply add them, right? So if you think about it. If you take tau times this one which is right here, tau times this one, and tau times this one, you're essentially adding these wrenches. Which makes sense because if you think about it, if you, if you impose a tau, or sorry, I keep saying tau, T, twist, displacement, twist, on this, uh, you know, this stage, if you, if you impose that T, that twist displacement, so say so you force it to move a certain displacement, well, you know, you times that by all this stuff you calculated, this one will get you the wrench, the globally defined wrench caused by element one to resist that. This will get the globally defined wrench load to resist that twist by element two, and this will get the wrench uh, imposed to resist this, this uh, twist by element three. And of course, they're all in parallel. They all experience the same displacement twist and so uh, you would add those wrenches together to get the total wrench. If, if you know the wrench, the force that this imparts on it, the force that this imparts on it, the force that that imparts on it, by trying to move that stage to the twist, then you add them all up and it's the total force on that stage, okay? So you can just literally add these wrenches together and you get this, okay? And so that tells you the stiffness matrix, the KTW, twist wrench stiffness matrix of that parallel element is the stiffness of each element summed together, okay? So when you have elements arranged in parallel, you add their stiffness, uh, you know, as if they were in parallel, right? Because they are in parallel, right? So parallel things, you add their stiffness, and that's the twist wrench stiffness matrix. Okay. Okay, so that's cool. So let's do an example of that. Um, okay. So let's... Uh, Let's say we take this, um, this, uh, this system here and uh, say it's global coordinate system we're going to conveniently define in the center of this top square. It's on the top surface of it. We're going to find x, y, and z in those directions, which is convenient because it points you know, perpendicular to these flat surfaces and everything. That make it easy for you. And I say this is 20 centimeters, that's 20 centimeters, so it's a square. Okay, and this is 2 centimeters down and these are 25 centimeters long, and they're 0.5 centimeters uh, wide and thick, okay? And they're all the same, it's just four wires, okay? So let's find the stiffness matrix um, of just this first element one, this guy over here in the corner, okay? Well, to do that, let's first find N, 
Okay, and by the way, you say we're told the entire thing is made of aluminum with the Young's modulus of 68 gigapascals and a shear modulus of, of uh, 25 gigapascals, okay? Which is indeed the case for aluminum, okay? So let's find N1, okay? Well, first, you know, let's find an L vector, the points from that global coordinate system defined with respect to the global coordinate system to where this attaches to the stage. This is the ground, that's the stage. Where does it attach to that stage? And then let's define N3. Let's make sure it goes into the stage to meet our, uh, you know, co convention. And then N1 and N2 just need to point in directions perpendicular to these flat faces, and they need to follow the right-hand rule. N1, N2, and it goes up, okay? And we could have rotated them any way we wanted as long as they, you know, this could have been N1 and that, and that could have been N2, okay? But they just need to be perpendicular to those faces and follow the right-hand rule. Okay. So let's just say we wanted this where N1's pointing this way, N2's pointing that way, N3's pointing that way. Okay? All right, so first of all, stare at that, put me on pause, and tell me what the L vector would be. Okay? All right, well, you might have gotten it right, but you probably didn't because you probably took it on the edge. Okay? Remember, uh, the X component here, this is 10 centimeters over to the edge, so you want to back it off by half a centimeter. Okay, so it ends up being 0 0.0975 meters, okay, and, um, oh sorry, you want to back it off by half of a half of a centimeter, right, because you want to go to the middle of that square cross section. So this would be, you know, half of 0.5 is 0.25, okay, and so you're going to take 10 centimeters minus 0.25 centimeters, and that's, that's what you get, okay, and same thing in the y direction. And then, but you do want to go down all two centimeters, so it's negative 0 0.02 meters. And just put everything in meters, SI units, um, you know, it'll make your life easier. Okay, so that's, that's the L vector. Points to the center of that wire. Okay, the top of its cross section where it connects. Okay, now let's define N1, N2, and N3. And remember, these have to be unit vectors defined with respect to the global coordinate system. Okay, so so N1 points this direction, so it's X is zero, Y is negative one, and Z is zero. And there you, you have it, okay? And there's no units there, it's just a unit vector, okay? Uh, it's just a direction. Okay, N2 is points in the same direction as X, so you do one, zero, zero, and N3 is zero, zero, one. Okay, so those, those are those things, okay? And, um, and this is just saying our convention here, N1 cross N2 has to equal N3, okay? But uh, so now we have L, we have N1, we have N2, and we have N3, and we've labeled them with the correct units, okay? Now what we can do is build our N, N uh, vector, right? Or sorry, N matrix, where you'll recall, let's see here going back, and you can go back to the last slide. See this, this vector, this matrix right here? This is a six by six matrix. You would plug those values into that. And if you do that, and you should memorize that, by the way. Well, you know, it's not hard to memorize the N, N matrix, what goes in it. But you use these uh, four values, these four vectors, plug it in, and you'll get something like that. And make sure you put your units inside these things. Again, the unit vectors don't have units, but this one will be in units of meters, okay? Okay, so you found your N. Now what you want to do is take that N and you want to find its inverse as well. So just do this in MATLAB, don't do it by hand. You know, take this guy and invert it and you'll get, uh, you'll get this, okay? Okay, so because you're going to need your N and you're going to need to know your N inverse, okay? So now let's find the stiffness matrix of element one, okay? So what you do is you go back to that one slide where I give you uh, the... Um, the compliance matrix, okay? And you plug in all the values. You'll notice these are plugged in, you know, B and H were equal, and they're equal to 0 0.005 meters because of this, okay? So I, anywhere there was an H, I, I plugged in a B. Same thing I did here. And since they're equal, you don't have to swap anything. You know, it's just, this is just a function of B now. And L, you know, I give it that. I convert it into meters. And I correct for all that, notice there's an, a negative one up here. This is inverted, okay? Because it's easier to plug it in as compliance and then just invert it for the stiffness, okay? S1, okay? And then um, 